Askar Bakari is from the Muslim Public Affairs Committee and joins us now live. Good afternoon. What did you think when you saw this video? Uh, yeah, I uh, saw that video a few days ago and, I mean, what can you say? Disgusted, um, upset, outraged, angry. Have you heard of, of instances like this where there are groups, albeit small groups, going around in communities saying, this is ours? Um, I've not heard, I mean, that video was the first I actually saw it, uh, that kind of mindset manifest itself um, in, in, uh, um, in that way. But I know that that type of mindset that uh, um, the, the civil liberties group that I work for has been combating is growing. It appeals to a, um, an underclass of Muslims, a, a young, uneducated underclass of Muslims who kind of uh, um, are looking for a very, very simple, binary, black and white uh, version uh, if you want to call it, of Islam. And I know that that's growing and um, that kind of intolerant, bigoted kind of uh, um, view of, of human beings is, uh, is growing, sadly, within, within this young underclass of Muslims. OK, you say you've been discussing it. You, you recognise it does exist, albeit in a, in a minority. What can be done about it? Um, well, currently, nothing's being done about it, and primarily by uh, the Muslim community, but primarily really by Muslim leaders. I can't really blame the Muslim community. They're not an organized force in that way, and they look to their leadership uh, um, um, to do something. And as usual, they never do anything. I mean, this happened outside a mosque. And how strange, how disgusting uh, that the mosques right around this country have absolutely refused to take any action against this growing, I know it's a, a minority uh, um, uh, view and a, a minority kind of way of thinking, but that uh, uh, view is growing and catching on amongst many, many young um, uh, disenfranchised Muslim youth. So that something must be done. And we can't keep looking at the government to do something or, 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 or outside forces. Well, at some point, we've got to look at our own leadership and say, what are we doing? What is our leadership doing? And uh, sadly, uh, they're not doing anything. It's, it's disgraceful. Yeah, I mean, the bottom line uh, as well is that, that what they have done or what we see that is being done in this video Video is actually illegal and, and therefore the, the criminal justice system needs to come into effect, surely? Absolutely, it is, it is illegal, but I, I want to go deeper than that. Yes, it's a crime, but w why are young people taking to it? Why are they not challenged? What's, what's, uh, uh, why this happens outside a mosque? So things that are preached inside a mosque that make people think in a certain way. Why is it m turning young Muslims into that bigoted uh, um, uh, kind of uh, uh, extreme? Why is it not enlightening their mind and making them more open-minded, more able to grasp the complexities of, of ethics and morals that the religion of God is supposed to teach? Why are these backward mosques, often funded by extreme uh, uh, versions of Islam from foreign governments, why are they even allowed to, to um, you know, propagate within this country? And more uh, um, damningly, why is our leadership so silent when this type of kind of uh, um, horrible um, act manifests itself within society? You see, you could, you could argue that actually the, the Islam aspect of it is irrelevant. Any group of, of youngsters, three or four of them, who go out and, and perform this sort of behaviour, they could be any colour, any religion. It does happen in, in all sorts of communities around the country and that this one is just being highlighted because it is Islam. I completely understand that, that argument. And, yes, I, 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 I accept it to some uh, degree. But... This is a group of people who are um, propelled to act in this bigoted way because they believe wrongly that that is what Islam demands of them. Now, as soon as they believe that um, uh, Islam demands this of them, it becomes surely uh, uh, incumbent to ask questions f from ourselves to say, well, why do they believe this? Who's combating it? What action are we taking? If the EDL, for example, is doing something, then wider society is condemning it and saying, well, how do we get these young people not to join it? Well, same thing surely with the Muslim community. Why are we so silent? Why is it uh, um, so easy to wash our 
hands on our own youth's um, problems. These people are, are, are believe this, and they're not. The, it's not just four or five. There are hundreds of people, young people, who believe this, and I come across them daily. So it's not a tiny group of people, and they are not challenged. They are um, almost led to their own devices. Any uh, uh, um, crazy notion that enters their mind is almost endorsed by whoever is teaching them this kind of bigoted version of Islam. And often that bigoted version is either not challenged by the mosques or reinforced by these uh, uh, mosques who are paid for by uh, uh, um, you know paid for by foreign governments who who believe in this. Kind of extreme version of Islam. Okay, Askar Bakari, thank you very much for talking to us. My pleasure.